Well, actually, it's really challenging for me to make the presentation in the afternoon. I think everyone is dozing off. You've been here since morning. Uh, lots of agencies have been giving very exciting designing concepts and ideas. Well, I will give a uh, packages um, point of view how to innovate packages. Well, let me first introduce myself. I'm from Mars Chocolate, China. Um, I'm the senior packaging design manager. Um, it's 14 years since I graduated from college. Um, in the first seven years, I worked for Mondelez International as a designer, as a packaging designer. So my understanding of packaging innovation is that um, I get orders from the marketing departments, and then I will try to meet their demands. Then five years later, I had the opportunity to be transferred to Mondelez International US. Um, well, it's actually, it was the headquarter of uh, chewing gums, where I was exposed to many experienced packaging designers. They had um, innovation manager who comes up with really brilliant um, packaging designing ideas. Um, and they use a whole set of very creative tools. So that really opened up my horizon. Then I joined Moss, and I'm in the packaging design department for six years. So now. Um, I have more experience in uh, packaging design. So I would say uh, we need to work with your um, marketing department to discuss how packaging would better help business. So this is a very brief introduction of myself, my background. I believe the majority of you are in the package industry. So I'm not here to teach. I'm just here to share. If you have any um, ideas, you could come to me after the session. Well, I have to start with, with introduction of Mars. Mars was a family enterprise. When I first arrived in Mars, I was a little bit confused. Um, when I was working for uh, Mondelez International, everybody knew the brand name like uh, Cadbury Chocolate. But then uh, when I worked for Mars, I realized that Mars is a less known brand. However, um, it actually had lots of sub-brands. So I, I believe um, I need to do a little bit uh, promoting of our own company. And uh, I will share with you what is fit for purpose design, a relatively new concept in Chinese. And I would like to also share with you some tools that I find useful that could help a uh, fit for purpose design. And then I will give you some real cases. Introduction of Mars. Uh, Mars is a family business. Um, it has six uh, business uh, businesses: uh, pot, chocolate, chewing gums, beverage, and food. It was founded in 1911 uh, with some uh, 33 billion U.S. dollar revenue every year. It's unique as a family business. You may immediately recognize all these packages, right? And these are all mass products. Um, we take pride not only in our brands but also in our culture, uh, which is which has five principles. 
These are our guiding principles in our work and in our decision making. I just share one of them: uh, mutuality. When seeing the world, but it might not that difficult, that easy for you to understand、uh, what is mutuality.、Um, I remember that before I joined Mars, I I was interviewed and I heard a story that was really inspiring. The HR people shared with me that story. That many years ago, a supplier, a long-time supplier of Mars,、uh, failed to deliver because、um, the warehouse was burnt up. Therefore, they failed to deliver delivery. And then Mars decided that because it was a long-time、um, supplier, so Mars would、um, actually put money in the supplier to help it. Uh, to overcome the hardship, so this was a very good case of mutuality. For Mars, they believe that、um, sustainable development is something achieved together with our partners, and we believe in mutuality. We believe in、um, growing with our partners. This is just one of the examples that we'll share of our principles, and these are all the stories of how we help、um, cocoa farmers to grow with us. Now, what is fit for purpose, and why?、Uh, let me go back to the origin. Fit for purpose design、um, actually came from Europe. Mars Europe had many sites in many countries, of course. So、um, for instance,、um, a chocolate may ha- may come in different packages. Um, range in different weights. So at that time, we made a category, and under this category, we have the so-called the zero base term. So what does that mean? That means the、uh, that would be. Package that meet the basic needs. For example, like、uh, film coverage. So, if、uh, you need the basic thing to wrap it up, so that will be the so-called zero base. And in addition to the zero base, you also need to meet other purposes. Like、uh, we need this cover to be better displayed on the shelf. We need to meet the emotional needs of the customers to make them happier. These, apart from this zero base, we need to add other things in. After you consider all these things, when you go to the production line, you find that、uh, it's difficult to realize that idea. So the process cannot.、Uh, Really、uh, achieve that, and then you need to adjust your design, and finally you go to the final design. And when it goes to the market, you find that there needs to be more adjustment. So this is a, like a cycle. So fit for purpose design. The concept is to when you design the package. This is will be the so-called、uh, appropriate design. You should not over-design it. If you match the purposes with the cost, you will see that some of the costs are not necessary. Some of the needs, if you put there, the consumers may not really need them. So there are three points that I would like to make. Oh, this.、Uh, 
this presentation is uh, sloped. Anyway, the first one. If you do appropriate design, you put all your characteristics, and then you calculate the costs and find what are the things that we really need. What are the things that、uh, we paid money for, but the consumers don't really need them? And then, second, you need to focus on the value, the real value, the true value. All and thirdly, all the design starts from zero base. The things that you must have. So from these three aspects, you will be able to consider. How you do this appropriate design? Another thing, the reason why we need to do appropriate design is because、uh, the materials that we use are very, very wasteful. Because all this package would be disposed of by the consumers, so we want to reduce、uh, the waste. So that's why we have this so-called appropriate design. We use the cotton as an example. The usage of、uh, cotton of moss can circle around the earth. Two times, you you can imagine how many trees are cut for this. So if it's over designed, then you would need more wood for that. So the package culture or the approach, starting from the raw material to the coverage. We want to make this entire process environmentally friendly, energy saving. Then, let me introduce to you some of the practical things. Well, people may say you talked about theoretical things. Can you give us、uh, some specifics? Well, first of all, there are several different project types. For example, like growth, that would be the normal development, and also you are trying to find more opportunities. For example, like efficiency improvement and also quality enhancement. And first of all, the first two is the KQA, is the key pack quality attributes. So this tool is used to measure whether the features are critical, whether they are closely linked to the customer. Let me give you an example. The so-called key features. So it actually stems from the need of、uh, consumers. For example, this morning we look at some of the bad examples of the designs and see how we can make improvement on it. You will see that for the same bottle of the wine. People have really different improvements. Some actually change it into juice. So the the, the innovation of、uh, package must come from the needs of consumers. You know, sometimes this needs is only categorized as one sentence. To the designer, for example, to see the smooth chocolate. Maybe the language that was used by the consumer was that I want the chocolate to be smooth. But when it 
this message goes to the designer. What kind of features should the、uh, designer have in mind? How do you translate these features into the parameters? So all the people who are doing packaging. Know that we need to have specification. That it's not about whether it can be feasible in terms of industrial production. It's actually it should be based on consumer needs. Then it can be robust. You can explain then to the business department why I need this. So that's one very important of key quality attribute. So here I have some very specific definition. So on the left is about consumer benefit, what the consumers need, and then what are the key QAs, and then. How you translate the TQA into industrial terms, things that can be achieved by industrial processes. You need to, for example, think about the quality of the suppliers, the production quality of your production line, etc. So let me give you an example. For example, the consumers might say the packaging needs to be appealing. I can recognize it. It looks smooth and luxurious. Then, if I am designing the packaging attributes, it needs to be. Stiff need to be glossy and has certain thickness. And then, if you combine the design with some other ornament on it, you need to all convey this idea. And then, you need to have the target and range. Say, for example, how thick need this to be? What is the range? How can you achieve this、uh, key QA? First of all, you need to let the marketing department、uh, join the process. You need to get the real good consumer insight. Sometimes. When we do research, market research, you have so much feedback. The consumer will say, "I like this. I don't like that." However, as the packaging professional, I'm not just thinking about what he likes, what he doesn't like. I need to have the insight. What they really want behind all these words. If you get that. Then you will be successful. So to get the essence, that's really important. That's the first step. And secondly, if you have this、uh, key feature, it needs to be measurable. If it's not measurable, you will meet more problems. And then you need to translate the ideas. You need to also match these things with,、uh, say, your suppliers, your production line. You need to think about how your supplier and your production line turn it into reality. And then you put all these things together. And please also remember that apart from the consumer, you also need to think about the customer, the client. Sometimes the, the customer has different view with the consumer, because,、uh, for example, con cons consumers more think about the single product than cons customers might think of.、Uh, How is it shown on the shelf? So these things will also be 
consider. So if you combine all these factors, you will do a good job in translating the needs. And then the second uh, uh, tool, uh, we call it DVF. It's called this balance of uh, the SWIFT features, where you find the so-called sweet spot, the balance point. What does this three words mean? The first one is desirability. Is that is how my consumers, designers, and the feasibility is whether I'm able to do that. And desirability means I'm making money out of it. The business is sustainable. So when you have the three circles, they need to cross. And then you got the sweet spot. If the consumers want it, but I don't make money. But if I can make money, but I cannot really make it reality. Or if you can do it, but the consumers don't want it. So this is another tool that we find very useful. You will see that what's the difference between these three? Three circles, right? Not very the same, like these are big ones and small ones together. So when we are doing innovation, we want at the beginning stage, we need to make the D circle bigger. When we do strategy, we need to make our product more popular. You cannot use feasibility at the forefront to kill the ideas of desirability. So at the beginning, you think too, uh, you think more about design. And in the middle phase, feasibility needs to be bigger. So here you need to give feasibility more weight because um, it relates to whether your product can be monetized. And then in the third phase, the V circle need to be need to take a bigger part. Uh, the business model need to be viable. You need to make money. So this is the th um, three phases of mindset that we use to guide our package design. Sometimes we. Um, feel something is not feasible. Uh, we come to that conclusion too fast, but given this tool, we, uh, we could better make our decisions. Now, let me share with you a um, detailed example of how the DVF is used. Uh, this is an old product. We feel that um, with people's um, like pace of living getting faster, people prefer on-the-go products. So we have this product on the market for a long time, but its uh, market performance is not that satisfactory. So when we try to redesign the product, um, we looked at the desirability. We uh, asked ourselves uh, what, what the consumers want. How could we improve that so that it's desired by more people? Um, we examined the consumer's need. Um, to see whether the package meet their needs. And then we realized that uh, we were not doing a good job. Um, the package was outdated. And that um, allowed us to see the opportunities. And then um, from the customer or client's point of view, whether our product was desired. And also, we compared our product with that of our um, competitors to shed that light on the changes that we need to make. 
So we've done a lot of studies to try to identify places to improve. For instance, previously, um, the color was not attractive enough to make it stand out in the shelf with, um, when it was displayed with the products of our competitors. Um, and then also many years ago, when chewing gums were first packed in plastic boxes, it was attractive. But many years later, um, this plastic package was also outdated. So this was also something that needs to be changed. So we um, made a list of um, the consumer journey. Um, a consumer is first attracted, and then he or she uh, takes a bottle, opens the bottle, and he throws it away. So the circle, um, we study all these behaviors and try to satisfy a consumer's needs. Well, and this is a later on step, of course. Um, in the beginning, we try to discover and identify the opportunities of improvement. And then when we try to translate those needs into detailed designs, we need to um, translate them into like technical parameters, different range, um, the range of arrow that we would allow to our suppliers. This is another example. The case just now was um, we tried to reinvent something that was already on the market. And this is an example of um, a product that, that has very good market performance, but we want to enhance that performance. I'm, I'm not sure whether this slide is not showing completely. M&M has a bottled product, um, which is, has been selling pretty well. It was uh, developed by China's uh, R&D, and it's sold in many countries. We have been asking ourselves how we um, we could further enhance this uh, market strength. Well, I don't know why this slide is not showing completely, but on the left was the first generation of the package. You see a smiling face. Uh, you see a face on the bottom, but on the top of it. Um, you can hardly see its emotion. So we try to improve it. We try to, um, because we think consumers would like to see a more vivid emotion, a uh, more vivid face. So we talk to our supplier to see how we could further improve the package to save the material used so that we could use what is saved um, elsewhere. And we um, succeeded. And this renovation also brought larger sales because after the renovation, the consumers uh, liked the package more. And the, actually, this bottle um, st stood out even better on the shelves. And this is the second round of the renovation because we found that um, we could do it even better. We use the um, IML label so that in some um, seasonal occasions, uh, during seasons or special uh, festivals, um, these would sell very well. So without increasing the cost of package, we have uh, introduced many uh, additions to the market, for instance, the Christmas edition, to attract customers. So renovation is not 
about is not only about um, designing a new product. You could always look at your current products and ask yourself whether you have fit for purpose design. And if not, how what you can do to make it better? So that that is my presentation. Thank you so much. Two minutes. Well, that's wonderful. Anyone? Two minutes for questions. Well, thank you so much for your presentation. It was fascinating. Just now, you said that um, you also uh, have environmental concerns, and you would you would not uh, want environmental uh, waste or waste that would impact the env environment. So, any initiatives that you've taken, um, because would that mean that you need to make uh, business compromises? Would that um, a very good question? Um, I focused on sustainable packaging for many years, uh, and we have many projects for that. We have projects every year that um, looks at how we could um, better package so that we protect the environment. Um, I believe you need to strike the proper balance. Um, you should not only consider about the environment. Sometimes if you know how to do fit for purpose package, you are already contributing to the environment. As an uh, enterprise, uh, well, I believe um, well, each company, each enterprise in the industry um, has uh, CSR activities that concerns uh, environments. Uh, last year, we added this recycle logo to all the packages. Although recycling is not um, across all China, we believe uh, we should help educate our consumers um, to raise their environmental awareness.